Good evening, uh, viewers, and welcome to what is supposed to be the first edition of Guyanese Critical Live for 2022. I've actually have to start in 2021 because today, as my head of states, uh, MPs in Parliament tried to steal the mace and were very disruptive and try to stop the government from passing a bill that is supposed to benefit uh, Guyanese people. Um, I was not there. So with me, I have a minister within the Ministry of Public Works, uh, Diodat Indar, and Minister of Labor, um, Mr. Joe Hamilton. And they who were there on the ground are going to explain to us exactly what transpired. I am going to ask questions to make sure the people have clarity as to what would cause this kind of vulgarity in Parliament. Uh, ministers, uh, good evening and thank you for this opportunity to bring clarity and transparency to Guyanese. Good evening and thank you very much for having us here uh, this evening. Uh, whilst we are here with you, I can say that uh, on all television stations actually, you have two or three ministers doing the same thing that we are doing here with you, uh, so that we can properly overnight inform the nation about what transpired uh, in the National Assembly. Can you um, give me from your perspective, being a seasoned politician, have you experienced anything as such before? No, not at all. Um, but what uh, the opposition they were attempting to do is this. Um, they have worked it out. And Guyanese must understand what is happening. They have worked it out that once this bill is passed, it allow the regulation and the framework to ensure that the proceeds from oil come into the public treasury. And that allows the government to start utilizing funds from oil revenue to expand and develop this country via infrastructure work, more housing, healthcare delivery, educational de delivery, social service delivery. And they know that once that happens, already they know that they will never again be back in power. But Guyanese, you think about it. We have not, that is the People's Progressive Party said it, we have not started to utilize all the revenue to do all the things that you have seen us do in a, less than a year and a half. So just cast your mind, your minds, when we start to utilize all revenue for the development and expansion of this country. The more technical issues of the bill, my colleague Deodat Indar will deal with it, Minister Indar, because he was close to the activities of the framework and putting the bill together. Uh, what I'm dealing, I will attempt to deal with the political issues surrounding um, what transpired. The other important issue, and let me see this to the public, I said it earlier tonight. And the people who support PNC in Afno and all the leaders in Afno must understand. You cannot intimidate the People's Progressive Party. They must understand that. I'm repeating it to say that. The party of which is the bedrock of this government survived for 70, 70 years outlived the British Empire, outlived Forbes Burnham and his dictatorship, outlived Desmond Hoyt with small fire and slow fire, outlived Granger trying to steal in elections. So I don't know why these Lincoln Poops think that they could somehow intimidate us. Uh, they could seek to have us cow. That will not happen. That cannot happen. We were elected to govern, and govern we will, with or without the opposition. Minister, I think you're on point in, in, in terms of the 
the political aspect of it and how you're expressing the sentiments of your PPP comrades and, and ministers in government. As you said, you're not be cowed. Um, Minister Indar, if you would afford us the opportunity of having an understanding as to what is this bill about, how it, the process uh, which was sought or gone through before this bill came to Parliament, why, um, since this was the, 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 the rectification of ram or ramification to an existing bill, um, if, I, if I'm to be corrected, sure. um, why would there have been a need to correct a bill? Just give us a little understanding from the, the technical perspective. As a critic, today is actually a historic day for the People's Progressive Party government. Led by Dr. Fanali. We have promised in the manifesto two things. I mean, with respect to the oil and gas, two significant things. One is local content legislation, which passed this morning. And two is the repeal and the replace of the Natural Resources Fund. So there's a reason why, I'll get to the Natural Resources Fund, but let's talk about the local content. Both of these bills were tabled on the 15th of December. The local content bill that we passed today was five years overdue, bro. Five years overdue. These people, I was the leader of the private sector. When I first made the call, you can check it. I first made the call for two things. One is local content legislation, and the other one is a sovereign wealth fund legislation that protects um, all the, all the oil revenue and the, in, a, in a transparent way. Today, the local content legislation passed after a rigorous period. Now, let me just tell you, the previous government on the Granger had two policies, woefully deficient. We complained on them over and over and over, woefully def def uh, deficient. They never signed on and never put it, even the policy they didn't put. Frustration in the private sector, because there were the gas in the street booming and it's expanding, and you have a massive amount of, of Trinidadians and Americans and people from all other nations coming here, winning contracts, and they need to them out of Looking that every single day. So this bill, this local content bill, is to fix that mischief. And it's ring-fenced 40 different areas of services, which include uh, rental of office, warehousing, um, immigration services, janitorial services, environmental services, food supply, legal services, accounting services, you name it. 40 different areas is now ring-fenced for Guyanese. Minister, so, Minister Inar, just, just to... Um, most of the persons who are viewing us is the layman, the, yeah. the man on the ground who wants to understand. And the, your government has claimed um, that they are working with the manifesto with the intention of helping the, the layman on the ground, the common, the common man. man yeah. So to make sure the common man understands, local content is a policy that will... It's a law now. We just law now. So law. today, it is now a law, law yeah. that has been created by this administration Correct. Correct. and put in place, passed into law, like laws that stop you from doing illegal things, this one stop you from smoking marijuana right. and other things. This, one's this law is a low, it's called the local content policy. Law, local content law. Law, this yeah. law, local content law, mm -hmm. um, is now in place to protect Guyanese people and businesses. Correct. You said it good. Okay. The only thing, there is no policy here. You can't break policy. You can break law. So that is why we want to make sure we legislate this, this requirement. Because let me tell you straight. The private sector and the people of this country literally was begging for five years for this legislation. Begging. The previous government, they did nothing. They had a hand, they sit on their hands. Five years. They didn't do anything. Now we pass it. They go through it with a fine teeth comb and tell you, you need a comma here. You need a... For clarity. For yeah. clarity, minister. Um, this law that now is in place to protect Guyanese. Guyanese was not put in place before. Never. There was nothing to protect Guyanese. Never. And there are businesses here presently capitalizing on that. Correct. Foreign businesses. They will, they will now be acting illegally. Yes. If they go against they have, this they law. They have one year to get the house in order. So they have a year now. To get the house in order, the, the Ministry of Natural Resources have to put a secretariat in place. 
uh, they have to create a local content register. Now, let me just say this, right? Before, there is the resource offshore. There is the Guyanese people. This law comes in the middle to connect Guyanese people with the resources. So you directly get businesses from the operator, licensee, tier one contractors, and so on, right? So you, they, they got to come to you for businesses on the, in the 40 areas of the green fence. Now, the law have a lot more on it, but what I'm saying to you that we passed this law today, and then after we passed this law, we went to the other aspect of the legal architecture, which is the natural resource fund. That fund now doesn't deal with the private sector to some extent. It deals with the money that you're getting from the, 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 we call the royalties, go straight into a bank, bank account, a lockbox system, and then you have to draw it down. Would it be, would it, can I say, um, I'm ignorant to the facts. Yeah. Let's say I'm ignorant to the facts like the layman. Yeah. Is this similar to the 80 million that the APNA would have received? Well, well this corrects that. So this, oh. if you bring money as an oil company and give any public official, this law makes it illegal. Because the money has to, all receipts from oil and gas operation, whether it's rents, royalty, bonuses, signature bonuses, anything to deal with the oil and gas operation, have to come into this fund. And you cannot draw any money from this fund if you don't go to the parliament where them guys, the opposition, as I just told you, they were looking at colon and sending colon today in the local canton bill. You tell me when you go to spend this oil money and take it to parliament, they're not going to scrutinize it. That is the ultimate place for scrutiny. So this big hula hoo is nothing but a mosaic they try to paint so that they can be able to stall this legislation. So as soon as Ashley Singh get up so, the chief up on the other side get up and ask for the, 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 the bill to go and select committee. Which bill critic ever come out of the select committee? All them die a natural death in the air. So what they want to do, and they tried it with the local content legislation all the end of the day to try to put it in, 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 in this we call select committee because they just don't want it fast. They never did... They never wanted local content. They, they frustrated the private sector. And I guess that is why they're in opposition now. The private sector is glorified with this bill. Glorified is not a man, woman, and child who don't like that bill. Because it gives guys a fighting chance to enjoy their own resources. And the NRF bill, which is the subsequent legislation that they tried to block just now, that Anna tried to go and thief this mace, it looked gold, like gold and so. She tried to go thief the mace to stop the process. They tried whistling like if they're selling a black and fruity to disrupt the place, walk around in the wells of the parliament where they're not supposed to go. You know, all Minister, of these things to stall the legislation. It's very history. unfortunate that when we're supposed to have um, what is a serious dissemination of educational information, we got stopped a little bit. And, and I, I want to pause for about a 15 minutes and I want to talk about the comical thing that I see. You talk about the, the mace. No, no, we can't walk down. I thought, this is my opinion. I, I, forgive me for being ignorant of the happenings in Parliament. After I see this, I get excited. I, I, I got to go read up now and learn about Parliament and how it work. Yeah. So, I look into the thing. And I say, man, and it's going to lash somebody in the head with a bat. <laughs> so, I say, somebody got a bat, so... When I say anything, the next guy with the next to me said, no, is that a bat? I said, no, man. That one thing like what Hanuman has got. <laughs> you understand? I said, no, she got the Hanuman, like he left the thing in there. Right? And she decided to lash the speaker in the house in the head. Right? No. I look in at it, and then the guy said, no, it's, it's a maze. I said, so if this is removed from there, why would they want to remove that? Explain to me if they remove that. Help me understand yes, well, what would have happened. The debate can go for, but let Joe answer that. Joe's no, gonna, uh, no uh, parliamentary action, action mm -hmm. can happen. The mace is the symbol to say that the parliament is in session. When the speaker comes into the chamber, mm -hmm. the sergeant of arms comes with the mace, and while the speaker is calling the parliament, session order he puts down the maze yeah. importantly if you look at some of the comical things they deliberately squatted in front of that area most of the women that was attempting to deny 
the mace from being placed where it's supposed to be placed so that the parliament session can start. The speaker, utilizing innovation, kept the mace on his desk. Because in some jurisdictions, that is where the mace is at. On the desk of the speaker. And so, whilst they were trying to disrupt Ashley Singh, and as um, in our uh, spoke to ring fencing, we ring fence at Ashley Singh. Because for us, the bill must be passed tonight. And so we were not paying attention to their uh, obstructionist uh, behavior. Uh, they attempting, attempted in the early stages when Ashley got up to sing, as to speak, Minister Singh, to try to disrupt, and they came close to uh, in, in what you would call um, threatening behavior. Because uh, based on the security laws and the laws, uh, if you're in a, a man face so many feet or something like that, basically... It, it but outside of that, we are on a COVID-19 period. Yeah, yeah. And they're the, the supposed yeah, they, they, to they, they the attention to that. Most of them are no mask on at all. And they were coming to attempt to... And we were in fence at this thing. So after they couldn't get their way with the minister, they moved to go and try to intimidate the speaker. The speaker was ring fence in some regards, and he was allowing the debate to continue with all the foolishness. And therefore, they recognize now that they were not getting their way. So the next thing to do is to stop the debate. That is why Annette, uh, and, and you would note, they chose Annette. It's two persons they would have likely chosen to do that, either Annette or David Patterson. You know, they, they, they have the history of shining gold bangles and, and bracelets and so. So, you know, she really... It's an attraction to... It's an attraction to these two... To shiny gold, objects. To shiny objects, gold-looking objects. Mm -hmm. So she decided she's going to... They're going to bring... Of course, they, they decided that. The marshal, the field marshal of all of this that was happening is one senior counsel, Rosdale Ford. Mm -hmm. He was the man who was uh, adjusting uh, the play. Um, you know, so when they snatch that mace, the speaker again, you see, when you're dumb, you're dumb. They never understood that another mace exists in the parliament, even though it was as small as that. So the speaker now uh, resorted to the mace to continue the session. And of course, that one is more smaller, so it's Andier. And <laughs> he hold on to it. Uh, with his dear life, whilst they are still continuing their chant. After a while, they left. So all that has happened was total failure as normal. Atmu always fails. Two questions I want to ask, um, <laughs> Minister Hamilton. I have lived through the opposition as a government who attempted to rig an election who attempted to hold on to power at all costs. I really and truly am supposed to look at things from a perspective and give the information to the people. Um, but I've, I'm known for being very vocal, so I give my opinions and people ask for my take. What did your yourself and administration expect from a PNC-led Opposition. Just what has happened here. We, we, we were prepared for, we discussed this. We were not caught on guard. Okay. We expected what transpired would have transpired. Would what, you say this is hopeful opposition leader, no leader of the PNC, Aubrey Norton's directive since yes. he's been very... Well, well I, I was going there to make the point that um, information suggests that one of Mr. Norton's play is to create this condition so that some of the people who he wants out of the parliament and the speaker uh, sanction them and this part because the speaker can. People can be suspended from the parliament. Can, people can be ejected out of the parliament. And if you note, if you follow what was happening, you would know the speaker was calling names of MPs. That was deliberate because what comes next is sanction.
because he has identified people who were disrupting the parliament. And so I suspect Mr. Norton would like for many of those to, 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 to be gotten rid of via the instrument of the speaker. So although the people of this country would have suffered as a result of this bill not going through, this might not even be for the people of the country. The people of the country might be pawns in a PNC political game. Is that yes, what you're suggesting? Yes, 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 yes. Because they have, their, they have their own issue. But the wider issue I alluded to when I started my, my comments is they know. Listen to me. They have already, they're dumb, but they're not that stupid. I can tell you. They have worked it out. That never again based on all the, what you just mentioned, the election people really attempted and so, that they have no chance in hell getting back into government. And now, the fact that all proceeds, the government will be in a position via the National Resource Fund to start drawing down on the all proceeds. And, and let the public understand, the PBC civic government has not touched oil money to do none of the things we have done over the last year and a half. We are trying to, because we, our commitment to the people was that we will only do that when we have this framework that determines how you do, how you utilize this fund. And that is what we are attempting to do. And so they know that utilizing the fund, funds that will come out of the oil and gas industry, will create an expansion, a rapid expansion in this country. And let me point out, you would note that today, Aubrey Norton assembled his largest picket exercise with about Sorry. 15 or 30 to 20 percent. The point is, critic is this. People are concerned about their welfare and their economic development. You are on the road, and you know what people talk about daily, is how my life will be improved. So people are not caught up in the foolishness anymore about some leader who is visionless, seeking to lead them into demonstrations to what end, when they could be utilizing their time, seeking to take care financially of themselves and their families, seeking to build their house, seeking to uh, raise enough money so that they can send their children uh, to school in a proper way. That is people's concern. Welfare and economic development. Uh, healthcare facilities. Educational facilities. So, so they at no FC, they seem not to understand. And let me make this point to people so they understand the dilemma the PNC they have. Look, the PVP over the period has made available housing and lands to many persons critic who for the first time in their generation ever owned a house since the parents came here on the slave ship or on the Indian ship. And people must know that. And so when a man don't have a house, it's easy for some wild politician to influence them to go and burn somebody else. But when you have one, <laughs> you think twice because just like how you think you could burn somebody else, somebody could burn you. When you have a vehicle, it's easy to vandalize somebody's vehicle. But when you have one. So the economic development of people have created conditions that nullifies the type of politics that the PNC still want to continue. That is why they're not getting takers. That is why you would note, and you are around more than I do when they have these things, is the normal suspects will come out. You, I'm sure, are acquainted with many of the faces that will come out. It is only... Uh, it's come down to what I've seen as, as now the opposition protest. It's come down... What, what happens... And I don't think Guyanese are understanding what they're looking at. The opposition protests 
as they call that it. is what they did in parliament today mm. what normally happen is politicians lead protests so you have people who are dissatisfied yeah. who come to a protest and are led by a leader who tell them you have been wrong this is that and that yeah. and then thousands of people come and protest yeah. Now, the only body protesting is the opposition who directly benefits from creating confusion. I don't know how, but it seems that it's some kind of turn on with the opposition. I'm trying to get a better understanding. I'm trying to get, um, I, I, when you guys say we're coming over, say here, call some of these guys, let me get their take also, for them to explain why they act in the manner that they do. Because we are supposed to be working, it is of my opinion, from the layman perspective, that there is enough resources in this country to go about for every Guyanese. Fortunately for us, we have found oil resources, natural resources that dwarfs other countries' resources. And these are countries that are doing well for themselves with large populations. We have a very small population, have had a large oil find, and if our politicians could just come together and have a better understanding of how we we'll work together for everybody to benefit, this would be a very nice yeah, country. But that, but that is good thinking. That is what we would like to see, because this the local content bill that deals with that is for Guyanese. It protects Guyanese. It it it. it the definition of a local company has changed to beneficial ownership of 51% or more um, owned by Guyanese. And that makes you qualify for to be a local indigenous company. In addition to that criteria, there's another criteria that says that 75% of your management staff must be Guyanese or 90% of your non-managerial staff must be Guyanese. So what it does, it creates... Um, the substance over form. So the legal form of a man just jump off a plane and come and register a business by some lawyer and have his address as his, his business address no longer for you, for you to qualify as Guyanese company. You have to have actual employees of managerial skill. You have to have 51% have to be owned by the Guyanese and this is voting right shares. So what I'm saying to you is that this law is good for Guyanese and you're right that we're supposed to work together and it is designed to help all Guyanese. But what you find today is not normal thuggish behavior. It's not bajan or black yard behavior. It went a little above that. It transgressed that. It went to anarchy and it's a malignant kind of behavior. It will only get worse. So the people of this country need to understand that that kind of behavior will continue and get worse. But we want to say to the people that we don't scare easily. That kind of behavior there, we don't scare you. We went through that, as Joe said earlier, when they was trying to ring. But that time they had the police and every all the state apparatus at their disposal. But we still didn't scare. I was in the room. I went back to do an interview in the room to expose them. And a number of them came to me. Right, they four. They came trying to shout me down when I was talking to the, the cameraman. Uh, Ganesh Mahi Paul, the chief whip, a couple more of them tried to encircle me and drown me out to the noise. But they don't scare you. So we had our... All of the ministers, the cabinet, the MPs, our leaders in the people, we don't scare easily. We are not going to be intimidated either. So we got to make that clear. We are not, we're going to continue doing the people's business and no one is not going to stand in the way. Now, I just want to say this to you quickly. A lot of people start to push on the head now. A lot of them now, I see the, the head now come up and they're talking, some of them endorsing the behavior of these people in parliament. And this is atrocious behavior. It is my people behavior. Endorsing that behavior because they have a difference in what they think that an RF legislation should be. But the means can't justify the end. Regardless of who you are, the means cannot justify the end. That kind of behavior is not suited for uh, oil and gas nation. The world is looking at us. You know this. Joe, you know this. The whole country knows this. The amount of people coming here to look at the investment, when they look at that behavior in Parliament, I said, what, what do you think they will say? Is that where I want to put my hard on investment dollars? They are creating this kind of disruption and instability so that they will stave off that, but it won't work. It won't work. So we want to make sure that we stay focused. The NRF bill has passed, the local content bill has passed. And as Joe said, what we're we going to spend this oil money on? 
things to deal with capital formation and social formation. You want to make sure that you put capital works, infrastructure, drainage. Look, little rain for the whole city flood. The whole region, three region flood. You gotta you have you gotta build out adaptation measures. We have a, a, a whole system of medical system where we don't capture uh, data of patients and, and have all of those things, all of the high end equipment. So our people deserve that too. We is only the, the North Americans or the or the Europeans deserve for us one healthcare. We deserve that too. We deserve for us one education too. We deserve proper infrastructure, roads, bridges, ports. We deserve those things. And you can get those things in a sustainable way. Mind you, their beef is that you're gonna draw down all of the money in the forest here. But what they don't tell you is that the second, third, fourth, fifth year, the percentages are sliding from 50 to 25 to 5 to 3. So all the rest of the money that you haven't drawn down stays in the fund as heritage so that you can transfer to the next generation, the next generation after that. It is called intergenerational mapping, and that is in the legislation. But you know the usual politician. They're going to tell you what you want to hear, they rile you up, and tell everybody um, who to blame for the misery. So and that is what they've been doing. One of the things that was done today, and that was very glaring, and I saw it across uh, um, the media, there is something that protesters were asking for outside to be in the legislation. The Santiago yeah. Principle. The Santiago it's Principle. There. And it is in the legislation. It is how, there. Can, how can the opposition justify their behavior, their um, clearly lacking of understanding? Lacking, I think is malicious. You, can't, you know, there's a term for it is enthusiastic corruption of the public good. That is what it is, because it, it is clear in the language of the bill that this legislation um, conforms to the Santiago principle of transparency and accountability. In addition to that, the accounting of the money is done using international financial reporting standards, which is one of the best global accounting standards. They also have the external audit have to audit this money. Nobody can infringe audit and reporting. The reporting goes back to Parliament too. They, they, they have to lay the reports in Parliament for scrutiny. Before you spend the dollar out it, you gotta take it to Parliament and debate it before you draw out any money. So all of this thing that they are talking about, it's not that they didn't read the legislation. They know the legislation will only do good for the people of Guyana and PPP go look good. So they wanna stall, stall, stall. What do you think they're suggesting to put it in select committee for? You don't wanna say something. No, no, it's, it, that, that is it. The, the, all that is happening here is politics through stupidity. Because nothing they have done will redound to their benefit. Nothing that they have done. Because whatever they do, they always fail. Because in their planning, they never take it to the logical conclusion. And like they failed with the attempt to rig election, again, tonight they fail. They wanted today, they came to parliament today to stall two important pieces of legislation to stall the government work, that is what. To stall the government being able to be in a position to give goods and services to the Guyanese people. And when that does not happen, then they could blame the government for being in uh, inefficient. That, that is what is playing out here. Minister Hamilton, um, what I saw today in Parliament, I could have uh, likened to a stabbing for $120 that I saw a video. I don't know if yeah, you guys yeah, saw the I video. Saw, yeah. I could liken to um, vulgarity in a dance. I could liken to many things across Guyana that we see on social media. I'm talking about videos that people get in trouble with the law for. Was there any illegal act committed in Parliament? Today? Well, trying to keep the base, I suspect, uh, is an illegal act. Yeah, and I think coming into the wells. Uh, coming into the wells, because you're, you're supposed to be echoing in your seats and chanting all the things. Okay? The other thing is, one guy maliciously, the man who was just elected chairman of the PNC, uh, he maliciously disconnected the PA system. all the PS systems in the Parliament. Mm -hmm. So that is... Uh, tampering, I, I suspect, with the people, the lawyers, and the policemen, I suspect, they will be. But those are matters that the speaker, he has to deal with in conjunction with the security services. But 
what transpired there today is what it is not politics it is desecration that is what happened they desecrated a treasured a treasured cherished place for democracy and the democratic culture but of course they are strangers to democracy and democratic culture so that is what they did today and of course Every one of those people are fighting for relevance within the realm of their party, more so the PNC. You have to understand, you have a set of people who are determined to do, go to the extreme to prove that I am more worthy, more so with the type of leader that the PNC just elected, the blah blah man as, 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 the, as the vice president said. So they, they want to be seen as being the most militant, the most crazy. And that is what was playing out. You have people who went deliberately into the crazy zone to desecrate the National Assembly. That is what happened today. It is not the normal. We have had rambunctious times in the parliament. I've been in the parliament around in the parliament since 1998. So on all sides, government and opposition, on both sides, PVP, MP, and PNC. So I have experience all kinds of situation in the National Assembly but this year nothing compared to this this was this, this desecration of the National Assembly this was an attempt to intimidate the Speaker of the National Assembly I would say to attempt to assault the Speaker of the National Assembly for that matter there are pictures on social media so that shows Parliamentary staff that who were assaulted by member of parliament from the from the um, opposition. Those matters the speaker will have to deal with uh, the people. The issue of sanctions uh, the speaker will have to deal with. What I will say to the public here: We of the People's Progressive Party say that we were elected to govern this country, and govern we will. Whether with the opposition or without the opposition. We made some com we made commitments to the people of this guy of this country via a manifesto. And we will do everything possible to ensure we fulfill those commitments. At the end of the day, and you will hear uh, the president always making the point. It is about delivering goods and service to people. It is about ensuring we improve their welfare and their standard of living. And all the things they were trying to block today is not us. Why is they attacking us? But basically the people of there. Because if the two bills didn't get passed, the people of Guyana will suffer and would have suffered. And all the clamor we want to get into oil and gas and so, we would have had no instrument to participate via a law, like Indira said, five years, we have no instrument to participate other than talk, other than crying that Trinidadians and Filipinos and whoever coming, I'm Minister of Labor, and I have had numberless of reports about people not receiving equal pay for equal jobs in the oil and gas industry, but there was no legal instrument to deal with that. Today I can deal with that because the local content, content legislation addressed that matter. About league, about equal, equal pay. pay for equal job. So, so you understand, on the labor front, among all other fronts, the local content legislation addressed those issues. And the National Resource Fund... Guyanese laborers. Yes. Working with a foreign company. Yes. Are now entitled by equal law pay to equal, equal pay, pay for equal work. work. And, so, it deals, and it deals with expats and repats. Too. So, you know, a Guyanese can come here, they be trained, they are sent in some other jurisdiction, they are deemed an expat then, but then if they come back to Guyana based on the current setting, they are given Guyanese salary, which is different from an expat. So, the repat. Um, with all of this scale, why do I have to come back to Guyana when my pay is going to be cut? Now, there's equal pay for equal job. Another important thing that the public must know is that David Patterson, 
on the instance of the opposition, attempted to bring an amendment yeah. to exclude citizens of this country. There was the amendment was seeking to say yeah, that only Guyanese by birth is entitled to participate. Yeah. So, so Guyanese who would have left themselves and want to come back. Yeah, they, 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 all the diaspora people yes. would not have been counted. To the people, a lot of people who have experienced yes, this size. would not have been counted. They, they would not be considered as a Guyanese company yeah. or a Guyanese citizen to participate. If a person went overseas uh, and they lived there with their children, and it is unconstitutional, but they say we're attempting they were to, to have that. They were the, to the, the, the law, the, the constitution specifies who is a guy. Needs and the Immigration Act as well. Too. Right, specified. But they were attempting to insert in the local content legislation, debarring hundreds of thousands of guys to participate in yeah. the oil and gas industry to earn it and to a, work. It was a foolish piece of... Do you understand me? Change. So Guyanese by naturalization, marriage, is marriage, Guyanese born overseas, would not have qualified. Only Guyanese by birth, only those of us who were born at Georgetown Hospital <laughs> or, or Woodlands, according to David Patterson and Apno, AFC, would have qualified to participate in the oil and gas. Uh, uh, obviously, we, obviously, we rejected that. Eh? And we, we rejected, rejected it. that. We rejected it. It came up for a vote. And we rejected it. Also. But, but I'm, ju I'm just trying to enlighten people. These people who think, who, who tonight must be there around trying to talk about how they have your interest at heart. What they were attempting to do. To exclude all the diaspora people. Could not have participated. Um, all their children who were born overseas. Would not have participated. The other important thing in that they, 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 they attempted to inject is this issue about people only qualify for, for a, a new more self mayor to something only three year con three years contract. Yes, they want to limit the life of the contract. Of, of a contract. Yeah. So we listen. This this resource is Guyanese only, and you can't put a, limit the life of a contract when somebody is invested in the business and got a contract, that is a private sector arrangement between the supplier and the, the vendor and the, the, the client. You can't get and stick your hand in those things. As government, as no, government, as government the, the, the opposition wants to have laws. Let me, let me get it clear here. The opposition wants to put in place a law that limits the contractual time between yes, yes, a yes. Guyanese citizen, the Guyanese business, and no, no, I, I won't call it a law. The law was stable by the PPP. Mm. They saw the law and wanted to insert an amendment, an amendment to it that will limit the contract life of a Guyanese company when they do get work. Only up to three years. So <laughs> if me as a citizen, yes, they be selling company white man, Exxon Mobil, Exxon Mobil, Sebano, me you go, I let you style. I think I want you to do this business with me for the rest of your life. Uh -huh. They want only three years by natural design. They come in and insert themselves yes. to make sure that only three years you can have yes. a contract. Yeah. So the life of the why country. does the government need to play a role in that? In in, in that the area. That's the question. That is and that is their behavior about government overreach. That's the problem that we have with the NRF too. It has the Minister of Finance on the previous NRF that they passed during the no confidence, after the no confidence, the government has fallen in 2019, 3rd January. They passed that legislation. And all of these people were crying now about the legislation we bring into Parliament. You didn't hear a word from them. The legislation was passed. It's a piece of, it's woefully deficient. There is a sustainable amount inside that nobody can calculate. There are four sections that deal with it and emergency fi uh, financing. So if you ask the 750,000 people to go read that section to say how much you got to draw down, they can't give you an answer. Minister Nair, since we're on that, complex and since we're on that, it. please expound a little more. Now, for the regular citizen to understand, there was a bill. There was a bill. There was an existing bill. Correct. The PPP, yourself, your administration decided they would reformulate Correct. a bill. And that has been passed today. Yeah. Give me the differences. The main differences? Okay. So, 
the last bill that they had, which it, which they passed out of a period of illegality without any parliamentary opposition. This is the first problem. That's the first problem. This the was problem. a bill that would pass on July 2019. Opposition, when they were in power, but the they had fallen. Yeah, no this confidence. Is after no confidence 2018, yes. December 21st. Yes. So they're not supposed, under uh, that arrangement in the council, they are not supposed to go pass any major legislation. But they went to parliament, possibly, and get it done. Nevertheless, that system required a a macroeconomic committee, right? That the minister got appointed chair. The minister hand was everywhere in the legislation that he's appointing chair, he got approved stuff, everything gotta go back to the minister. This bill that we have put there, and we recognize that one, that is a serious problem. Two, is that the drawdown rules are so complex nobody understands it. That is the second big problem. So we corrected that. What we have done is remove the macroeconomic committee with a board of directors, with about five people from the financial sector, business sector, entrepreneurs, somebody from the National Assembly, um, so that they can have a civil society board. When you say somebody from the National Assembly, are you suggesting because yourself, you are in the National no, no, Assembly? No, 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 no. Opposition? No, no, no MP cannot be. No MP cannot be. Mm. There is... There's clear distinction on that. That is what makes this bill so good. So no MP cannot sit as a board, a, a, a member of the board. No MP, right? What I said, I wanted a member of, um, who is a pri from the private sector. So five people that can make up this board. And they say in the legislation clearly who can't sit on this board. And no member of parliament can't sit on it. No person with a, a convicted background can't stay on it. No person that is part of the other two committee, which is the investment committee and the public oversight committee, can't sit as a board member. No person that has a conflict of interest, family conflict, with any investment that the fund is in, can't sit on the board. So it excludes a wide range of people and keep government out of, of the management of the fund. So this board, this board that we put in here, it's really civil society operating this fund, managing the fund. How does government access that? How does government work with The that? only thing the Minister of Finance has is get a broad, broad directives. Broad. Not go into managing fund. The board is mandated under this new law to manage the fund. The board gets information from the Public Oversight Committee, which is about nine members, and the Investment Committee, which I think is about seven members. Right? And they're drawn from broad society, all the different places in society, to come together and advise this board. Right? So it's managed by what is the main thing. Which is a change in the structure of how the fund is managed and keep all politicians out of it. Now, um, Minister Indar, you're telling me the last administration set up thing where the minister they in most likely they set up in a fashion that they could push in the hand at the bottom and get something. Why would you change that when you could push your hand inside and get something? Because too? we believe in transparency and accountability. The, this, this fund act that we put in. Is keeping in principle with the Santiago principle, which is transparency and accountability. You have to have good reporting, so you gotta make sure that the bill, the structure of the bill, is in line with those principles. So you can't have a bill that speaks about Santiago principle and then in the mechanics of the bill, you're breaking those principles. It is the entire structure of the bill is seek to deliver transparency and accountability. That's why the reporting side of it is clear. You gotta make sure you report to Parliament. You gotta take quarterly reports, you gotta put on your own reports. You gotta make sure that anything that you draw down from the front or want to draw down from the front goes to parliament first. Debate it. Then if it's appropriate, then you have power to draw down the, the money to go into projects. And is that any and all projects this thing going into? I told you before. It's into infrastructural works that the country badly needs. It's in for the education system, health system that the country badly needs. And adaptation measures in the green we are building out the green economy with our low carbon development strategy. So you have to do adaptive measures. You know that when we're in for the old place flood, we got to put in adaptive we call mitigation measures and so. How long can we bear with this kind of thing in your economy? No sense to lock up the money there and you can't spend it. You spend some, but you don't spend all. It's, as I said, the drawdown rules start with a high percentage, but it starts to slide down in a, in a, in a really rapid way. So you can't draw all the money that you're collecting. So monies are left into the fund. Natural resource fund. Yeah. 
There's no laws that guide na natural resource fund, how it is used, who, there's a board of five persons yeah. that oversees this fund. Manages the fund. Manages the fund. Um, none of those persons are directly politically aligned. No, it, 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 the legislation clearly says, no, you can't be sitting on that board. Good. You have to be of a certain standing to be a part of this Correct. board. Correct. All right. So you're suggesting um, we are going to be looking persons from civil society. How the whole setup is people from civil society. The whole setup. Yes. People with financial background, people with um, um, professional background, people of that. You know. Now, no they matter what happens here, there's the fund, um, an entitlement of all Guyanese or should be accessible by all Guyanese and that will be via um, different projects, projects, projects being projects. done. Um, the opposition still represents a vast amount of Guyanese. How or what role do they play, if any, at all? Well, if, I think if they wanted to play a constructive role, they would have done it. Look what happened today. Look what happened today. And let me tell you, you watch the kind of projects that our revenues will go into. It will be in accordance with what we put in the legislation. Clear as day will be developmental work. Developmental work. So I don't think that they want anything that our government do. They don't want us to look good. Their job is to make us look bad, tiny or our, our, our work, and stall anything that we want to do. So how do you work with an opposition with that modus operandi? Maybe Joe can answer that. He been in the black. No black. one is. No one is. No one is perfect, um, uh, Minister Hamilton. But I'm trying to get an understanding of the PPP administration in, in, in the past. In the past administration, aired. Um, no need to get into the details of what they aired. They, they were out of government by 2015 because of their errors. What holds the PPP accountable as it relates to this fund? I know everybody gets in. There, there are going to be different projects that um, the PPP is going to invest in. The PPP is working with their um, manifesto. The president plans to deliver on that manifesto. Nonetheless, we're all human. What happens if some individuals, let's not say the whole PPP, decide to go away. How do we keep the people? The first thing that what we mechanisms the first in place thing that for that? We, address, we have in the legislation uh, penalties for people like Jordan who collected the first eighteen million dollars and didn't report it right. to the nation or the national assembly. Jail time of the law is clear. Jail time. So for the first time. Yeah. The finance minister, right jail. now, yeah. to jail. unlike what Happened. the previous five finance minister was able yeah. to get away right. with, cannot get away. Our with. finance minister, no, if he did that, he will face the court and pen, jail time. And pen. Okay, Roger. So, so that that is that is a fundamental um, thing in the legislation. The other important thing is you are. And that was not in the previous legislation. No, no. Talk about it, talk about it. Okay. The thing was run by the Minister of Finance. He was the Alpha and Omega yeah. based on the bill that they had taken to the Parliament. And that is the reason why he thought they gave him an $18 million gift. He said that publicly. But that is after many times saying he did not know. He did know. not know about it. But the point is this you ask how they will play a role, the opposition, as in that indicated. All the issues regarding the drawdown from the fund will come to the National Assembly for scrutiny and debate. The projects we talk about, yeah, all of those things will come there. So they will have their role to play. And the other important issue is the issues about transparency we spoke about. All the projects we will do will be via public tender. So that is how you, you, you control where all the projects you 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 you, you um, by public tender people are aware. The other important thing in the bill also, um, all the monies you have to account it 
a com the nation will know yeah. all the monies that mm -hmm. you draw down. Let, let, let me add to what Joel said. So in the bill, there's a special section on accounting and reporting. So you talk about accountability. The accounting and reporting is that you gotta you gotta force account for the money. It's the competitive nature of bidding. Um, you gotta account for the money. Then you have to report that money. Every cent has to be reported. And that reports, those reports are laid in the National Assembly too. So there's no bodies that are, and it's audited by the Auditor General Office. So at the target of every year, tax time, you gotta make sure that you lay your, your, your financials in, in the parliament with respect to this fund or there's penalties attached to that, right? So there is clear guidelines for reporting and accountability. They have quarterly reports also have to um, have to be given to the Minister of Finance who have to report it. You have to make it known that if you receive monies, you got to make it known that monies came into the account and from who. And that goes to the Parliament too. So the accounting and the auditing and the reporting side of this is stringent. It is very stringent. Is this, are these aspects, the accounting and the transparency aspect, how many components as it relates to transparency and accountability did the PPP infuse in the legislature? Well, I can tell you, right, the major changes that we have done is with respect to the reporting, as I said, the Santiago principle, the structure of the board, the structure of the public um, accountability and oversight committee. There's a public accountability and oversight committee that represents people from all walks of life, religious bodies and all kinds of things. People from the private sector, labor, all of them. So everybody's seen this thing. There's no, not, nobody can stash up there like they did with the 18 million. There's no room for that in here. Everything is clearing up, people watching over it, people from all walks of life watching over that. Right? So there is a public accountability and oversight committee that made up of, of nine members right now, I believe. And it, it comes from all, all walks Minister of life. Minister Indira, just, I'm, I'm trying to grapple with what would exactly cause the level of hooliganism experienced in Parliament today. Now, you're suggesting you took a bill that was basically the, the, the foundation and structure of it was created by the Act, yeah. the previous administration. Right. You infused certain levels of accountability. You brought in um, different levels of management and oversight. and oversight why then would APNO have a problem would the opposition have a problem the only problem I can see here as a regular man um, and if I were the opposition I would be very much worried is I, I spoke to the vice president in an interview recently about it the PPP has or the government has outdone itself when it was in government for 23 years it has outdone the PNC administration that had a reign for 28 and 5 years as it relates to direct cash transfer so the PPP in about 15 months, give Guyanese people more money than they themselves ever given in 23 years, them and the PNC has ever given in the lifetime of politics in this country. Do you think this is what the opposition is seeing and realizing? If they're giving, when they even got it, I have money for give yet, what's going to happen? Well, it is my studied opinion, and I use the word studied opinion because I've looked at it, is that anything that we do that is good for country is bad for the opposition. Sure. Anything that we do that is good for Guyanese people, that means it's bad for the opposition. They don't want to see us through. And I think that is my studied opinion on this particular thing. No, but that, that, that is the issue I started out making this point. That they are clear that even before 
having access to this money. As you have said, we have outdone ourselves in the last 15 months. Think about it. Without our resources, what we have done in 15 months. Some of the things the nation spoke about for decades, we did it in 15 months. Forever a bypass road was being spoken about. You have one today at least for one by by the, the next leg. couple of months you will have the other leg. The other the other leg. You, you have, so, so think about it. Just think about that in fifty months. And our term is a five year term. We will have the NRF bill in place. It means now you will have more access to financing and cheap finance. Because this is our money. The other money, a lot of, we have to borrow that money and you pay interest on it. You know, follow me? So there's a cost. Some things that have bankrupt a lot of countries. Yeah. So what they say here is our money that we will, the fund will utilize for development. Look, I said this earlier today, I'm saying again. I believe the APNU member of parliaments, they know that their life has ended as regards getting in the government. And so I believe there are only three reasons they stay in Parliament. There they are. One is to collect the salaries that they collect every month without doing any work. Two, they have access to a duty-free concession. And three, they could come to the Parliament and they have tea, breakfast, and dinner. And, and I will tell you, sometimes when they don't even come into the Parliament chamber, you could assure yourself that they will be in the dining chamber. <laughs> they so have got <laughs> used to fine dining. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they're so shameless that they boycott the parliament. But they don't come out of the grounds. But they make sure they eat. Right. They make sure they eat during the period. <laughs> Man, me would do the same thing, Mom, Minister. <laughs> me would do the same <laughs> so, thing, Tom. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> so so, so the point is, this, uh, listen quickly, is mm -hmm. that they are trying their darnest best cause the PVP to look bad as in Dara said. That, that is it. They know that. Once we have more access to more money, how this place will be transformed. Without oil money, we were able to give out in 15 months 14,000 house lots. You understand? 14,000 house lots. We were able to develop maybe 10, 12 new housing areas without oil. Out of our money, we were able to bust that road and continue um, the road. Without our money, it, and if it, it, I can collect, correct me, the road to be um, paved from Linden to Mabura is local funds, if I remember. Uh, no, it's, it's a mixture. Mixture of, of local, at, at least the CDB, government. CDB local. But the government is investing in that. I'm trying to show you big yeah. projects that we have utilized government funding. Mm. Uh, to, without oil money. Think about it, credit. Next year, you think you have seen a budget that worked wonders in 2021? I can assure you that the budget that the Minister of Finance and his team they are working on, you will see more wonders uh, based on the type of programs and projects that will be developed in the health sector, education sector, social sector, housing, construction, Whichever sector you think, agriculture, you think about because as the president continues to say, oil money is to be utilized to develop all the other sectors so that we don't become a nation that is dependent on only oil money. When we have land that we can do agriculture production, once we regularize electricity and get cheap power, we can launch into manufacturing and industrialization. So that is the program. Because the oil, it has a finite day and time. Correct. And many countries have failed because the only focus they had was oil. For that matter, many countries, they, they actually got rid of some sectors Correct. to focus just on oil. The Irfan Ali government will not make that mistake. And the nation, prepare yourself for the 
the budget presentation next year, and you will be in awe about the type of projects and programs that will contribute to people's life and their welfare and their development in every community in this country, every region, regardless who they are, where they are. Because for us, we are to give service to the people of Guyana. It has nothing to do with which short they wear. We are the government of Guyana that must give service to the people of Guyana. And that is what we will continue to do. So, this behavior, whether they continue with it or not, we were elected to govern and we will continue to govern. I think Joe summed it up. <laughs> now, viewers, um, you know, tomorrow the ministers, do, are you guys going back to parliament tomorrow for anything? No. no. Well, you deserve a rest tomorrow. <laughs> so, in wrapping up, viewers, I want to thank the ministers for coming and giving an explanation. Um, I can tell you, the way you deal with this level of hooliganism, if you were to have a program, if you had noise, that mean nighttime program, it should have been done differently. But I can't deal with hooliganism as I wish to deal with it with ministers in the studio. <laughs> Normally, you know, you gotta go as you say, ape and 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 just act the part, right? But I can't do it with the ministers here, so I apologize for not really bringing the real critic to you and dealing with the issues as I see it. Because I, I think what is more important is the ministers explaining um, how this administration uh, sees itself. Um, what really happened today from, from their perspective, who were there, witness, um, who were there. We all, we all witness what's going on. We we'll see a man running with Hanuman, Hamo, or whatever thing. As I see a thing, I want to know what's going on. It's mass confusion. So I had to get somebody to explain to me what's really going on. Right? But I want to thank uh, Minister Indar and Minister Hamilton for coming here. And I'm hoping, because... As much as you know, we're doing these interviews, and 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 there is a developing bias in me, and this is something I got I got put out there, because before these kind of interviews, I was the guy that's beat up on everybody. But let me tell you where the bias comes from. <laughs> Under the previous administration, I would call to get on to somebody to ask them for something. And I don't get. So I go up on my life and I beat them up. And everybody said, critic, beat up the government and this and that. Well, let me tell you about bias, because there is a bias. We got we to lay it out there. If any one of these ministers foul up or fudge up, as I say, I will be on the case, because I have a constituency. I got to represent you people. But there is a bias, and let me tell you where it comes from. I drive in on the road. And I was told of an old man who get knocked down and killed by, by Providence. And the driver, one of the drivers said, there's a man, could take the light. They didn't have the light on the road. I was able to call a minister and say, Minister, a man get knocked down and kill him. Now the minister didn't ask if it's a PPP man, a PNC man or what. Two days after the minister called and said, you know the light, they must pass and check the light, the light is on. So, what is my need then to come here and start a problem for beat up on the minister? So, yes, there is because my job is to go and get for the people, highlight the people's issues. Like, for instance, there was an issue in my pony where the bullet men get the money, right? And so the bullet can and start to come in. But, like, the leak and hollow, critic, they must tell the minister or somebody, critic, come in, we go, we get. And the minister said, critic, you don't got to kill him. We can go together. So we can answer the problem one time. So there is a bias. I have developed a bias to some extent. And that is a matter of fact. But there is just reason for that. And in me being transparent, I got to be honest about it. If I call, if you call me, and we're going to start a program where we can start back, a program where the people call and get issues. If you call me, I could get something done. Because I could call people. The last administration with King Jufi Jaffa and them, you can't get out to nobody. You couldn't get out to nobody. 
And now people know me and, and, and Minister Ben is not the best of friends. I said, Taki. You understand? Because I don't get what I want. When people call me, I can't get that. He, no, he answers his phone and says yes. So it's not everybody. But yes, they are biased that develop. Not in a bad way. Because of the fact that I could call on people and get things for you. And that's why I call the ministers and say, here, this is what we need to explain to these people. What happened today? Yeah, come and explain to me what's going on. And I'm really glad for this opportunity of you guys coming and explaining to these people what's going on. So, you got it clear as day what transpired today and what some what you got to take away, what you the citizens got to take away from this is how you benefit, how you get. Simple as that. Thank you for tuning in to the Guyanese Critic Live. And I'm hoping to be back from January 1st, whereas we're going to have ministers in here explaining to you how you, the Guyanese people, benefit.